So responsible design, sustainable design, you know, I've been in this field working for quite some time and every day, there's not a single day that I don't ask myself that same question. What is sustainable design? It's a word we see everywhere today. We read it in newspaper, we did it in the headlines and commercials and social media. And um, as I believe everyone in this field right now, we're all in transition. No one is an expert. We're, every day we're learning something and with a very humble approach, we have to embrace every day with that understanding. In order to answer the question, what is sustainable design? And how can we tackle the great challenges the fashion industry is facing today? I went back to the definitions. Um, let's, let me share, share them with you briefly. Sustainability, as defined by the Brundtland Report in 1987, is defined as any action that allows us to address and meet the needs of the present of, future, of this generation without compromising the needs of future generations. So that's the first promise of sustainable development. Then if we look at the definition of design, if you go ahead and Google design right now, um, there's many different definitions. There are many different design thinkers. One of my favorites comes from a book, which I, uh, it's kind of a Bible to me right now. It's called Design for the Real Change by Victor Papanak, written in 1971, where he says that design is a polyfunctional tool to address the true needs of humanity. And in a, with a very radical approach, he says that any designer that is outside of this field and doesn't see design as a service, should be considered a criminal. So when you take these two definitions and, um, and you take them for, 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 for what they are, and it's pretty clear that the, the, the promise of sustainability at this point of any design product lies in the capability of such product to become of genuine service to the needs of humans, to the needs of society and to the needs of the environment. We've understood we lost the true cost. And I think we can all concur right now that the status quo in the fashion industry is pretty far from this promise. So how do we came that sustainability tag? The thing is that the, 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 the problem the, with the, you know, using the word sustainability in the fashion industry today is that the conditions that have allowed for the fashion industry to strive for the past decades uh, on, the, on the promise of continuous growth, therefore continuing to produce clothing and selling clothing and, and, and growing have ceased to exist. The, the, there are some contextual changes, uh, environmental changes, of course, social changes, and hopefully soon, as Akan mentioned out, like legal, and, and political contextual changes that will delegitimize completely, in my opinion, in the next 10 years, the continuous production of billions of tons of clothing that we don't need. The industry right now is in transition and with any transition, there's inherent um, trade-offs. There are tensions, there can't be progress without a crisis, right? Uh, the, 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 what the industry, everyone, all of us right now are trying to do is to unlearn to relearn, to undo, to do better. We're trying to redefine growth formulas. We're trying to redefine business models. We're trying to redefine processes through which clothing are made. We're trying to redefine the role of clothing in, in society from an anthropological and sociological perspective. And it's a huge task. It's a huge task we're, we're, we're embarking in ourselves into. Um, how? Uh, you know, do we use design to help us in this task rather than do more harm than good in the process? Responsible design, if we go back to the definition, to do exactly this, help us in this process. Um, and in order to, to understand how the tool can become a function, we have to really understand the mechanisms of the fashion industry today, which think about it almost like as a small box, as a small box that is engineered to, to take positive inputs from society, positive inputs from the environment, and then transforming these inputs into outputs that unfortunately are negative for the majority of all. Uh, we have unhealthy conditions. We have, we've seen it, uh, unequal distribution of wealth. We have the pollution of resources. We have uh, an enormous amount of unrecyclable clothing that we absolutely do not need. In my opinion, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the solution to responsible design guys is to embrace organic natural fibers or to use 
more recyclable fibers or recycled fibers. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to go with natural dyes or, or jump into the bandwagon of recycled polyester. Of course, materials are important. But materials are important only as if, you know, as, as long as they're part of a bigger equation that consider what the function of clothing needs to be in society. And as long as the design thinking process starts from an understanding of the macro challenges that we're facing, waste, an abundant amount of waste that needs to be, you know, scratched at the, at the, at the source. If we're, if we're thinking about recycling waste, we're already making it, there's already a bias in, in the design thinking process. The first thing that we have to think about, therefore, is to use design as a service. We have to serve through design. As the designers, I think we have to embrace the notion that we have to use our work to address needs that are bigger than the clothes it's themselves. So let me tell you what the big elephant in the room is, here is today. Nobody needs Matteo Ward or any other brand in the world to produce more t-shirts and jeans. That, you know, we have hundreds and billions of tons of them. So the role of designer is to create better systems that enable clothing to become a medium to address these bigger challenges. That's, and make that question, ask yourself the question, how can I, through clothing, address water scarcity, address food security, address waste uh, recycling. How can I address all these macro challenges through clothing? Therefore, giving your output a value that transcends the product itself. Understanding how to do this leads into the second pillar of responsible design, in my opinion, which is being able to build empathy, to reconnect through design to transform what we're doing into a tool to reconnect with social and environmental dimensions that we have lost in the process, reconnect ourselves to these social and environmental dimensions that we've lost in the process, being able to open ourselves up to others, to adapt, to integrate with an inclusive mindset, those same dimensions that make fashion real and possible every single day. Because I can tell you that as of now, what I'm wearing, what all of us is wearing has completely disconnected from those dimensions. That's a huge problem. We have to build models that are participatory by design. Therefore, that's the third pillar, being able to collaborate through design, transition away, shift away from this linear individualism that is this, you know, super boring and old school and embrace circular collectivism, being able to build models that can include all of these stakeholders in the creation of the garment. This is the way in my opinion, to ignite change, foster innovation. I can speak for myself. We have patented a technology that allows us today to substitute chemical pigments and recycle minerals that are non-toxic for human skin, but they make soil sterile for the, only because we've been able to build participatory business models and include 17 stakeholders in the creation of new supply chains. So that, that is, a contribution that we have done, but it's a local solution that can be exported globally. And in this process, a tool that I consider fundamental to ignite change is also the involvement of the customer. I kind of spoke about supply chains and spoke about the importance of driving change with a multi-stakeholder approach. We call it a life-centric approach, a life-centric approach that comes from the involvement of customer in the designing of solutions. And communication plays a fundamental role not thinking of communication as the art of selling more goods and services. That's very 2000s and 1990s, Mad Men 1960s, but as the art of inspiring people and guiding people towards the adoption of a more responsible lifestyle. Um, but I was wondering how valuable actually is our purchasing power? And if we think about practical steps we can take today to support you, uh, you know, whether it be like shopping at thrift shops or whether it be um, getting involved in fashion revolution, how can we do that? You know, it's um, just like design as a service. I think we can, we, we're all designers. The moment we go out in a store and decide to purchase a new pair of jeans or, or a t-shirt, we're making a design statement. We become part of a supply chain. And uh, as, asking ourselves the same question, what is the service I'm seeking from this purchase? Because this purchase has consequences that go beyond us wearing that clothing has consequences on the people that have made it, have consequences and the stakeholders in the supply chain have consequences. Um, after we decide to, you know, stop using that, that, that garment, um, it's, a, it's a matter of, of reconfiguring 
the role that we give clothing in society. And I think a lot of changes will come when the integration with politics and laws that will enforce specific you know, consumption behaviors and usage behaviors and also design behaviors will, will make it easier for us to understand. Right now, there's a lot of confusion because we lack the standards, we lack a guideline, and we are enabling with this legal vacuum um, players, brands that have a lot of capital to draft their own narrative around what sustainability means, is, and how do we use and, and consume our clothing. Um, shifting away from the word consumption of clothing and, and embracing the word using clothing, clothing, uh, clothing as a service, I think uh, that will change dramatically. I'm jumping onto the chat as well. You know, how do we solve the issue of fashion waste? That was a big question. I don't have a magic wand right now. I think there's a huge responsibility on the design side to design for recyclability. Uh, to me, it's sickening that we all know that when we mix fibers, for example, today, it's impossible to recycle clothing. And still we have more than 70% of the clothing being produced every single day that are made of a mix of fibers. What the hell is wrong with us? <laughs> it's, uh, and on, on the same, I, I know, and, and this, is a, this is a huge design flaw. And then I don't wanna put the burden on the market. The market is not, you know, to be considered or feel guilty. We are feeding, you know, being feeded every single day, the notion that certain items are sustainable, that we can recycle, that we, we can be part of the change that is part of greenwashing. It's greenwashing tactics selling us the illusion that we're part of a, of a positive agenda for people and planet. And in reality, most of the times we're perpetuating an agenda for profit. And that is unfortunate. And, and again, I, I wanna use again, stress the, the verb sickening on, on, many, on many ends. We've talked about this um, need to have the shift in the fashion paradigm, and we've talked about all these different aspects of the industry and just sort of bringing it all together. What would the perfect industry look like to you? And maybe like what would be the one, two, like biggest ways to get there? <laughs> Although, of course, it's incredibly complex. To me, uh, in a simple word, is a service-based industry at this point. Um, we don't need clo clothing. The big elephant in the room is that clothing is a non essential items using essential resources for life. In 10 years, when we'll have to, you know, politicians will have to face the decision between giving water to people that need it and giving it instead to industries that use it in perpetual cycles to produce something that we don't need. I think, you know, if we, the answer is quite simple. Therefore, redefining the role of clothing and starting to transform clothing as a service um, through different business models uh, and clearly where materials and circularity and everything is our tools that become part of these new business models is exactly where we need to, to transition. The difficult part of it is understanding right now how to embed um, secure uh, financial sustainability into these new, new business models. But I think companies need to have the courage to test them and accept lower margins in, in the transition towards uh, getting there. Otherwise, we're never going to make it.